Let's jump right into it. Today, I'll show you how to set up a webhook system that connects Airtable and Make.com to create smooth automation workflows. Specifically, we'll be looking at how a button in Airtable can trigger a Make.com scenario using a webhook and a very cool way to use a webhook response. In this demonstration, we have an Airtable button that's set up to trigger a webhook. When I press the button in Airtable, it sends data to a make.com scenario which processes it and sends a response back. And yes, you can create this button even on the free version of Airtable. Let's press the button. As you can see, the scenario in make.com starts running right after the button is pressed. What's even more interesting is that the webhook response module is set up automatically to close the tab that opens when you trigger the webhook. The scenario is processing the data it received from Airtable and has already sent a response back and closes the tab that was opened when I pressed the Airtable button. As you saw, the scenario processed the data it received from Airtable and sent a response back and closed the tab that was opened when I pressed the Airtable button. My name is Jason and I'm going to leave a link in the description with all the resources you need to get started with this setup, including a template of this scenario and a link to my Calendly where you can book a free one-on-one -on -one video call if you need any help customizing this for your business. Now let's break down how this works by looking at the key modules involved. The first module in our scenario is the webhook module. This is where we receive the data from Airtable. It takes a record ID and passes it into the scenario. Before we dive deeper, let's quickly explain what a webhook is. A webhook is a way for different apps to communicate with each other in real time. In simple terms, a webhook is like a doorbell. When someone presses the doorbell, or in our case, triggers an event like pressing a button in Airtable, it sends a signal to a system, in this case make.com, to perform an action. Instead of constantly checking if something has changed, which is what an API does, a webhook waits for something to happen, then acts on it immediately. On make.com, when you set up a webhook module, you're essentially creating a listener that waits for specific data to be sent from an external source like Airtable. When this data is sent, for example, a record ID or other information, the webhook triggers the make.com scenario to start processing. It's a really powerful tool for automating workflows because it allows real-time responses without any manual intervention. Here's the webhook URL we used in Airtable to trigger this scenario. This URL is placed in the Airtable button's format to send the record ID when clicked. So we'll jump into Airtable now. If we take a look at the button field, you can see the action is open URL and the URL formula is a, using a concatenate function. It concatenates the webhook URL from the first module here, which is this URL here, and then it concatenates a question mark, record ID equals, and then the actual record ID of the Airtable row. After the data has been processed, we send a response back using the webhook response module. This module is set up to automatically close the tab that was opened when the webhook was triggered. In this module, we send a status code of 200, which is here, and this script here closes the browser tab once the response is received. This script, the body field contains a HTML script which closes the browser tab. I'll include this script in the resources that are available to you. Once the webhook is triggered, the Airtable Get Record module fetches a specific data from the table. The record ID passed through the webhook ensures we get the right information. As you can see, we've got the AI base and the AI models table and the record ID, which is used to grab the row, is mapped from the webhook. See how simple that was? 
With just a few modules in make.com and a button in the Airtable, you can trigger workflows and automate responses easily. If you'd like to replicate this or need help, check the description for these resources, including a template and a link to my calendar for a free one-on-one -on -one video call. If you want to replicate this workflow or need help setting it up for your business, check out the resources linked in the description. And don't forget to book a free one-on-one -on -one video call with me via Calendly if you have any questions. If you found this tutorial helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel for more time-saving tips and tricks. What do you think about the webhook response module? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and until next time, keep innovating.